Hello everyone, let's do the change in a foreign currency question in the recursion section here. So this question is about money and figuring out if you can uh, receive change given some denominations in a currency. So let's quickly read through this. So uh, different currencies have coins and bills of different denominations and uh, actually, I'm just going to scroll down to the examples here to explain what's going on. So, you're given here a set of denominations and some target money. And what we're supposed to do here is figure out if we can get the target money from the denominations, right? Is there any combination of these, uh, these values that can get you up to 94 by summing them, right? And so here it's not possible because uh, these are all multiples of 5, so you can't get 94. So... Here, the, the output is false, right? And in the second example, it's going to be true because you can get 75 from these guys here if you use uh, 17 and 29 twice, right? So the question is here, uh, or the, the task here, is to come up with a function um, given uh, a target money, which is an integer, and some denominations, which is going to be a list here in Python. And then they want you to output true or false, depending on whether it's possible to, you know, to get to the target money with the denominations. And this was in the recursion section, so let's try to use recursion. So how do we, how do we think about doing this? So one way to do it would be to just sort of in a way, use brute force, right? So you tr kind of try the first one, you subtract it off your target money, and then call the function again with the reduced target money. So why don't we try doing that? Um, okay, so for D in denominations, okay, we're just gonna call the function again, get exact change, but now with the, redu with the smaller target money, right? So it's target money minus D, and then the same denomination, denominations. Okay, and that's going to give us true or false. Um, so if that if that's true, uh, then we're done, right? We can just return true. Uh, so in our example here, uh, this would mean, in the, yeah, in the first case, d is going to be let's say four, right? So we subtract four from seventy-five. That's going to give us seventy-one. And if it's possible to get to 71 with all of these, it's surely going to be possible to get to 75 because you just add 4 for, to 71, right? So that's the main idea here. Um, so if it's false, you just keep going and you keep trying. If at the very end you've not found anything, then you return false, right? False. Um, and then we do have to take care of our base cases, right? If you keep sub subtracting stuff off of target money, eventually you're going to get to zero or something negative. If you do get to zero, actually, that's a good thing, right? That means you found a combination um, that uh, adds up to target money. So then we can return true. This is our base case, right? Um, if target money is actually negative, that means um, it did not work out. We did not find anything that adds up to exactly the target money, right? So we're going to return false. Now, um, let's see. I think that may be enough to pass the test cases here. Let's run it. Now the, yeah, okay, so test case one and two are passed here. Now, Let's think about the complexity here. So every time, every time we call the function, the function is going to call, going to be called, a number of times, which is equal to the length of the denominations, right? So let's just, let me just copy this in here. Okay, so here the length is five, right? So every time you call this function, it it itself is going to call the function another five times, right? So that kind of branches out exponentially, which is uh, if, the, you know, if target money is large and the denominations is a long list, this is uh, not going to scale very well here. So one thing we could do to improve things a little bit 
is to uh, cut down on our denominations here. Uh, instead of passing the whole list over and over again, we could do the following. So let's do for i in range. Uh, that's not what I want, sorry. For i in range. <laughs> Uh, and then the length of the denominations, right? Okay, so now i is an integer from 0 up to the length, right? Then, instead of subtracting d, we subtract denominations i. Ah. And let me put this over here. And then we don't pass all of the denominations to uh, to the function, right? We just start from from i to the end. So first, let me run it to make sure we pass our test cases, and then I can try to explain it a little more. So this should significantly cut down on the number of times we have to call the function. So we do pass our test cases. Let me try to explain why this speeds things up and you might not you may not notice the speed up in the runtime but um, if you try it with larger target monies or larger lists you should be able to tell the difference so here if we basically first we try subtracting a five from our target money and we call the function again and if that works then we're going to return true and we're good but if we try to use the five and it never works out that means that means there's no solution with a five in it right so then when i is going to be one well, first i is zero right but then when i is one then we only need to consider these right that's what i'm doing here right we're removing the first element so we only need to consider these because if there were a solution with five in it, we would already have found it in the first you know, iteration here. Um, so it's kind of a trick to, to cut down on the number of times we have to call this function. So that would be one trick to speed it up, I think, if I didn't make a mistake here. The other trick would be to do something like memoization. Uh, you can read about that if you want. Basically, the idea there would be um, if we're calling the function with the same arguments over and over again, uh, we could build a lookup table so that we don't have to do the whole computation here. Uh, so that would speed things up as well, most likely. Uh, okay, I hope that was somewhat clear and uh, hope you learned something. And if uh, you disagree with something I said or you have better ideas, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching.